And welcome to Sahula Safari, everyone, where I finally, finally, finally will be able to live out my dreams of having a vast, beautiful, open grasslands full of giraffes. But things are going to be a little bit more complicated than that because we also have Khoi the Thriving Little Village, a resident archaeologist, a pile of ancient bones, a whole bunch of people here to see some of the world famous dung beetles that we are breeding, a uh, very obsessive protea gardener, and a very lonely African wild dog in search of her family and her homeland. And I am so excited to introduce you guys to all of it in our brand new zoo. And it's finally time. We have honored the beauty of the Arctic pack with Ice Ice Outpost for a good couple of months. And now we're gonna switch gears for a little bit because this month is actually my birthday month. I am gonna be turning 32 on the 26th. And so I'm pretty excited about that. And I thought what better way to celebrate my birthday month and the month before I am going to be getting married to my beloved Chips, which is just next month, which I'm so excited about. <laughs> then with my favorite animal giraffes also i think my zebra literally just had a baby oh my gosh we what what we just had a brand new baby born yes this little one she was literally just born you guys what on earth oh my gosh we're gonna have to go ahead and we're gonna name her uh dawn because that was definitely just it's the dawn of a new era or i i suppose actually dawn let's go ahead and let's name her hope new let's see surprise opal opal sounds like here we're gonna go with opal because we're gonna have some archaeologists that i need to introduce you you guys to uh in just a second here and i need to introduce you to sahula sands because already look how popular this place has become which is very ironic because originally it wasn't meant to become a zoological society however there is a little family living here not a family of zebra, though we have a family of that too, but actually a family of African flower farmers who uh, also have some archaeologists in their family too. And this is their little house at the very, very edge of their family land. And these are their very special little flowers uh, that they've actually been taking care of for many generations. And I would really love to introduce you guys to all of them. So let me see if I can find the guy who actually owns all of this vast land and who has seen it uh, unfortunately eroded away by powerful sandstorms that knocked down the many beautiful mountains that we will definitely be adding back in to look like this because come on this is gorgeous lion king the cycle of life how amazing is this also nelly wait is <gasps> nelly just gave birth to Nelly, what the heck? No, wait, that's a pile of poo. I got a little too excited. Nelly is about to give birth, you guys. Nelly, that's so exciting. The heck? Nelly just gave birth to Masamba. I'm going to go ahead and we'll, we'll name him Simba the second because I'm pretty sure he is descended from Simba over in our pixel sanctuary. Uh, but I am getting the heck ahead of myself. All right. Pause everything, which we normally never do. However, there's a lot of, look at that. We already have like a mama zebra and her foal twice over. And I haven't even introduced you guys to the layout of the land. So my friends, welcome to Sahula Safari, where the sun is going to be rising most of the time so that I can actually see what we're doing actually. All right, there we go. We can go ahead. We'll let it kind of get into a little bit of sundown time but not sunset time. There we go. 
But this is Suhula Safari, where once long ago, this used to be covered in mountains and waterfalls, rivers and gorgeous ranges full of lions and wild dogs, zebra, reticulated giraffes, I almost said octopuses and I was trying to say ostriches. There you go. <laughs> Maybe an octopus if you go back far enough when it was covered under the sea. Who knows? But this is, um, we're going to say that the reason that this zoo is so flat, or excuse me, <clears throat> the reason that this archaeology, archaeo archaeological dig site, hmm, how should I phrase it? Uh, this wildlife reserve that happens to have future archaeological dig sites, including ruins left behind by ancient villages and fossils that we're going to be digging up. We're going to say it was hit with a powerful, powerful sandstorm that blasted and eroded everything away, chased all of the animals away, and made a beautiful flat section of land that for a couple generations now, the family who owns this has been being plagued and even threatened by developers wanting to turn this into the perfect shopping mall, which is really a retro idea because shopping malls don't really exist anymore. Uh, and unfortunately, this family has struggled to, to make money and to make ends meet because they happen to have some somewhat um, unique life hobbies and life career goals. Let me see if I can find all of them. Is this, okay, this is biologist Bree. She's actually a family friend who moved in to help take care of the animals that we have started to add in. Uh, and we also need to find, where is the rest of my staff? All right, let's find them. And Gardener Jev. Let's go ahead and find where Jev is. Oh, he's conducting some research. That's fantastic. All right, guys. This is Jev. Jev's family is actually the group who has owned this land for quite a long time. And he is descended from some very strong lines of uh, healers in the ancient past, farmers in the more recent past, and as far as his father and grandfather are concerned, obsessive botanist, which you might think is a very, very niche thing to be obsessed about. But just wait till you guys hear what they're obsessed about. African flowering plants, and Jev in particular, is absolutely over the top obsessed with this extremely rare line of protea flower that he has cultivated for his entire working lifespan. He is a uh, very acclaimed biologist or botanist, but he really only likes to study like African plants. He'll poke other plants if he really has to. And he really is obsessed with this flower, a sign of hope, a sign of renewal, the protea flower, which is from Africa. It's absolutely beautiful. It's one of my favorites. There's so many different variants and varieties, and clearly Jev and I could get along talking about them. Uh, but because Jev has been so obsessed with just studying this one strain, and this is the entire world's population, actually, we're going to say, of this one specific strain of King Protea flower, which may look like all the other King Protea flowers that are out there, but it's slightly different in its genetic code, and thus a botanist like Jev is obsessed with it. Uh, but because he has been so obsessed with that and dedicated his life's research to just this one tiny patch of flowers that he has cultivated to the bed that it currently is from a sample that his grandfather had tucked away in a book in the family library all those years ago, it exists nowhere else on earth. Well, that kind of is not very good with money. He turns down all of the other job offers and it basically was like breaking his arm to convince him to plant, you know, some greens so the family could eat, some aloe vera, some date palms so the family could eat. Uh, and he, he really is a one track guy. He just wants to have perfect dung from the animals that we have now been allowed to put on the land we're leasing from him but he wants perfect dung from them. So every time he sees a pile of poo, he's extremely excited because it means that he will be able to take care of his precious protea flowers. And that's a very niche thing to do. However, he got very excited when we approached him because he was just about to the point where he was going to have to give up the land that he and his wife and their family have been trying to repair and restore and even build up their, their old village homes once more. Uh, because, you know, he was running out of money and nobody was really paying attention to his protea flowers that are genetically different but look the same as everything else. And uh, he was going to have to turn this over. However, we came in 
as the Pixel Biology Society and Sanctuary, and we offered to lease the land from him and try to turn a profit and fend off those developers who want to buy out this place and just bulldoze it. So we're going to try to get the entire financial side of things looking really peachy and awesome so that that way we don't have to lose this precious land and the protea flowers that he has nurtured will be able to prosper and carry on and Bev, Jev's, 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 Jev's research will carry on uh, unafflicted. And the other member of the family is his wife. And let me see if I can find her. I think I saw her in the staff room. There she is. It's archaeologist Rella. And Rella is actually a very, oh, and she's very good at making cookies and donuts, by the way. But Rella is a passionate archaeologist who loves to research the things that are hidden away in the sands of the safari. And she is actually obsessed with digging up old rocks and old stuff and managed to uncover this beautiful set of ruins uh, that's complete with a bunch of little animals that happen to live in the ruins after the sandstorm with her own two hands and she's really obsessed with that kind of research but again unless unfortunately it's not very lucrative so even though she knows people will be excited about the ruins once they find them being able to afford new ruins cost a pretty penny let's see yeah that's a thousand dollars just to afford those those new ruins and doesn't even include any of the income generating little boxes here so she needs money and she needs time in order to cherish this landscape and dig up all sorts of really cool ruins that we're going to find inside, which I'm very excited about. So that's why we're allowed to build here, because that family is really desperate not to sell their land to the developers. They want perfect poo so that they can carry on with the protea plants. And they are also hoping to be able to make enough money to restore this whole place and take care of the family wild dog. Yes, the family wild dog. The village that uh, we have Relia, Rella, and that we have uh, Relia? Yeah, we'll go with Relia. The village that we have Relia and Jev from actually has a very important tradition that unites them to the land and that's to watch over an african wild dog family not have that african wild dog as a pet mind you but just to live alongside them and to be able to celebrate the rise the birth and the developments of the african wild dogs pack as though they are your own family members this isn't just like having you know lassie the family dog this is like having your soul bonded with the health your the soul of your village bonded with the health of one of these wild dog packs and giving each other very respectful long distances apart from one another. So we're actually going to do our best to take good care of the African wild dogs. And in return, they're going to take very good care of Rella's desires because every time we have a gold level African wild dog born, I actually have stockpiled a ton of fossils that you guys are gonna see. And, uh, well, actually, I guess we can do it every time we have an African wild dog born. That's actually even better. Yeah, let's do that. But every time the African wild dogs are born of this lineage, this specific, you know, lineage here, that are from uh, the, the family village that got blown away in the sandstorm. Also, I'm making this up as we go, mostly. So apologies if I repeat a few things. I'm reminding myself of my own story. But these African wild dogs have a habit of digging up those ancient bones. And that is one of the reasons that Relia, Relia, yeah, we'll name her Relia, because apparently that's her name now. Uh, but that's one of the reasons that she is so passionate about taking good care of them. Not only because they are part of like the village's culture and, and soul and heart, but also because when these wild dogs are happy and they have new puppies, they're able to dig up some of the rare fossils and bones that we will sprinkle across the land, which I'm very excited about. Uh, so yes, very like this family in particular of wild dogs is going to be like the soul of the family that we are taking care of. Uh, so very important to them, but also not like creatures that they go out to see every day. It's considered lucky if you see them in the wild. They respect them as wild animals. Uh, yay! Okay, so that's kind of the gist of things. And it was with a dubious heart that uh, Relia and Jev allowed us to go ahead and open this area up to the public. 
public under the management of the Pixel Biology Sanctuary. But we're going to show them that we can turn this place around. We can help them dig up fossils. We can help them spread glorious poo from my glorious giraffes all throughout the land. And we're gonna have a good time finally giving a home to some familiar faces because you guys have actually seen some of these animals before in our live streams. This is Joy, you guys. Joy, our beautiful giraffe who actually, I believe if I remember correctly, yeah, I, it doesn't mention who her mother and father are, but Joy is actually the young female. I think she's the firstborn. No! Joy, I think, is actually the female giraffe we bought! Oh! Okay, so she's not the firstborn, but she is from the albino giraffes that we were breeding over in the Nintendo, where we do our live streams. Oh, and the reason we haven't been doing our live streams is because of computer issues you guys are going to hear about in the vlog update this weekend. Um, they're kind of serious, and if you want to hear about how we opened up my computer to see why my webcam was lagging and then found melted plastic, definitely check out the vlog this weekend. It's going to be awesome. Uh, but anyway, that's where Joy comes from. And all of these zebra, every single one of them, including technically the two who were just born, are actually from the Nintendo Zoo as well. They are our little group. We have Blizzard who I can go ahead and remove like who her parent was now. We have Dusty, who really shouldn't be breeding because if I remember correctly, Dusty has terrible genetics, but she has a baby due very soon as well too. Uh, we can at least put her on contraceptives after that. We've also got Wisp, who's doing really well. She's actually a good, healthy zebra. We've got Andy, the boy, a gold level uh, male who's currently leaving some poo for the Portilla flowers and dung beetles. And we've got Nelly, who has just given birth to Simba the second and Opal. Oh, look at little Opal. Oh, they're new additions. And then the last new addition is actually this reticulated giraffe who I haven't given a name yet, but I think I'm going to name him Venture. F short for Adventure. Uh, but there we go. So he is a gold star healthy young male giraffe that I actually bought with our copious amounts of conservation credits so that Joy would have a mate. And that reminds me, I haven't given a proper name to the African wolf just yet, but I think we're going to go ahead. Panya? I actually love the name Panya. We're going to leave the name Panya. But phew! Okay, that was a lot of rambling and talking. Let's go ahead and let everybody wander around. Oh, and I'll introduce you guys to the last couple members of the staff. Uh, this is Rubble, Rubble Sorter Mech. He's actually our caretaker, and he is also uh, Relia's younger brother. He, he doesn't really do a lot usually. He's kind of a layabout and gets into trouble quite a bit. That's his guitar back there that he likes to play. His sister gets really frustrated with him from time to time. Uh, but you know, he, 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 he at least he has a job now. So Relia has gone ahead and let's see, archeologist Relia, because apparently that's gonna just be her name now. Ah, there we are. But really, uh, you know, she she's working with her brother to try to get him to help out with sorting the rubble. So he sorts her rubble. And then there, all right, Mech. Did I name this woman Beck? Bree, that's right, archaeologist or biologist Bree, who's here. In fact, we're going to go ahead and have her say that she is dung beetle researcher Bree. I love that even more. <laughs> Ew, all right, there we go. Oh, I'm so excited, you guys! I even put down little giraffes that I found on the Steam Gallery. Aren't they precious? To let everybody who walks in know immediately what they're going to be working with, which is precious, precious giraffes. Look at that. Oh, this is going to be so awesome. So, what we have over here in the ruins, basically we're saying that any of the animals that live in the ruins are actually generating income uh, from people coming to visit like these ancient ruins and see what's going on with them. So we have a couple Gila monsters and let's go ahead and name uh, Rocky Rubble. We'll name all of the exhibits after things that you would expect to see like in an abandoned ruin. And then let's do uh, abandoned house. There we go. And then over here we'll do uh, 
dried up well. I love it. So we have two sets of puff adders because they happen to have very expensive babies that are totally worth selling. And it looks like we already are working on having a few of those. We have also got, pardon me, I hiccuped. Uh, we've also got those two Gila monsters, which I'm pretty excited about. And the Gila monsters are not native to Africa, but you can only do so much with the exhibits. So we're just going to focus on imagining that the animals are kind of ambient and that people are giving us money because they're excited to see the history of these ruins that were uncovered from the sandstone. Also, Dusty is about to give birth. Let's go ahead and see what she's up to. Oh, I'm so excited. And we're making a lot of freaking money right now. Yes. <gasps> And another new zebra foal. What a way to start off. Oh, and it's a healthy male. Oh, guys, I'm going to need your guys' name suggestions because, like, we're actually growing this zoo. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're growing this uh, wild wilderness pres reserve a lot faster than I expected. So I'm going to need your guys' help to name everybody and to kind of get things sorted because this is amazing. Oh, I'm so excited. We definitely need to go ahead and get Panya a mate as well. Here, that'll be our last thing we'll do for today. Oh, geez, and we already, like, increased guest numbers. If we increase our conservation rating to one star, then we'll, like, get even more attention. Blizzard is just like, <gasps> what the heck? We've already got the mating going on with the zebras? Blizzard, are you expecting any babies? Ah, oh, not this time, but she definitely wants some. Everybody else had zebra foals. So she's ready. <laughs> All right, let's celebrate, like, the arrival of Sukula Sands by getting Panya a mate as well. And then next time, we'll focus on getting everybody some enrichment. Because I haven't managed to get enrichment for them yet. All right, let's look for <gasps> a healthy male African wild dog. Oh my gosh, he's, like, perfect. I'll take the one with the higher fertility gene. Uh, Macneck National Zoo definitely has some healthy ones. All right, there we go. I think we'll go ahead and we'll name him King. Uh, or King, well, I'll look at the moon flash by really quickly. Is it gonna be dark for very long? It's hard to see my animals when it's dark. We'll make it dark for not quite so long. There we go. Also, did we just unlock another? No, we didn't. All right. Oh, here he comes. Oh, gosh. I don't even know what to name him. There we go. And he just joined a pack so that he and... Let's see what he thinks of everybody. He and Panya are now mates. Yay! Okay, you know what? I'm going to have to look up what to name these guys, actually. Oh, and already their barrier needs repaired. All right, let's go ahead and drag Gardner back out every three months at least to repair these. Oh, I love African wild dogs calls. They have a huge range and variety of calls. Oh, and he's already like swimming. That's so cool. <gasps> Joy is about to meet. Oh, that's so exciting. That's so exciting. Do we have a baby giraffe on the way? We do not! Fooey! I think it's because I need to get their enrichment and whatnots up. But that's really exciting! Oh my gosh, Joy's already trying to mate. Apparently, like, female... How much smaller are the female giraffes? Venture isn't even, like, a totally fully tall giraffe yet either. Oh look, and there's our dung beetle researcher, Bree, gathering up all of the poop, which I appreciate. I'm gonna go ahead and give her... I might need to give her, let's train her. She's gonna ask for more money, but there's a lot of dung to clean up. So we might need to give her a coworker pretty soon, uh, which will be pretty fun because I don't think that the little family, the Sohula family thought that their little flower farm on the cusp of being bulldozed was going to grow into something so amazing so soon. I haven't even started to get like places for people to eat or or education centers down yet, but I guess this is the perks of finally having played Planet Zoo every single day for daily episodes since it came out, sometimes double daily episodes. 
We're finally figuring out how everything works and we can sit back, relax, and enjoy watching this place thrive. So I hope you guys are looking forward to Suhula Safari. I really, really am because I love giraffes. They are one of my all time favorite animals ever. I love making these kinds of village setups where we have motivations of families and where we have unique cultural things that we try to encourage. Like maybe we'll put down a bunch of protea flowers over here because that's definitely something that Beck would want to do. Uh, and I wonder if I can sneak a little shop in there so that people could start having drinks. And if that's the case, like the Beck family household or like the Sahula family household is going to get crowded really fast. So we might want to think about like what we're going to do then. But yeah, okay, I think we're going to be very prosperous a lot faster than I expected. So I hope you guys are ready. Oh, ready for the rodeo of it all. Look at this. Oh, it's going to be a beautiful time. It's going to be absolutely beautiful. So, if you guys could, do please leave a like to help us to gather up all of that uh, precious poo so that we can take care of our protea plants. And if you would like to join us on this and literally thousands more adventures, do please consider subscribing. But most importantly, my friends, stay curious. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!